हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोलॉजी श्री मुलिका देवी महाविद्यालय निगोज इन प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर वी वॉज स्टडेड द डिसीजेस ऑफ सिल्क वम यू नो द डिसीजेस ऑफ सिल्क वम इज मेनली डिवाइडेड बाय इन फोर कैटेगरी फॉर एग्जाम्पल वायरल डिसीज बैक्टेरियल डिसीज फंगल डिसीज एंड प्रोटोजोनल डिसीज in previous lecture we was take the whole information regarding fungal diseases of silkworm for example muscardine disease in that we was studied the types of muscardine example white muscardine green muscardine and yellow muscardine now today i will start the next type of diseases that is bacterial disease this is our last point of diseases of silkworm so let us start to study the diseases of silkworm the bacterial diseases of silkworm is also called as digestive tract disease because you know the bacteria of this disease is made mainly attack on digestive system of silkworm this disease is also known as transparent disease due to multiplication of bacteria in digestive tract of silkworm so it is called as transparent disease the leading of this disease is mainly swelling and transparency of body of infected silkworm and if the disease is high or higher in stage that time the infection is highest the silkworm will be dead within a few days the infection of bacterial disease the causing agent of this disease is non specific means if you want to specify this causing agent it is not possible because all the types of bacteria is mainly involved in this type of disease causing process but the common bacteria associated with this disease is streptococcus species this species bacteria is mainly cause the bacterial digestive tract disease in silkworm if the poor nourishment and adverse environmental condition and if adverse environmental condition during the silkworm rearing the physiological function of silkworm and digestive tract of silkworm in this disease is totally disturbed the bacteria take means if the bacteria is infected any silkworm that time bacteria is take all the nutrition of their body and their development from the infected silkworm and destroy the membranous tissue of intestine means if any bacteria is attack on digestive tract of silkworm belong to this species they are firstly take the nutrition means whatever the nutrient present in silkworm body they are totally absorbed by bacteria and you know this bacteria have the very high power of replication or repli uh, reproduction so it will be called as multiplication of bacteria is very high in this species so if one single bacteria is 
injected in digestive tract of silkworm they are multiplied very fastly within a few uh, few days and they take hold the nutrient present in digestive system of the silkworm and they complete their life cycle but this action of bacteria is caused to damage the digestive tract of silkworm they mainly damage to or destroy the membranous tissue of intestine of silkworm next point it is very important that is symptoms of this bacterial disease the symptoms of this disease is differ different to different according to the species of bacteria and time of occurrence or infection then kind that is type of bacteria you know different types of bacteria is cause this disease so according to kind or types of bacteria they show the different types of symptoms particularly this disease or this disease causing bacteria is mainly affect the, affect the digestive tract of silkworm so it is necessary to keep in your mind if any type of bacterial infection is happen in your rearing house firstly to check their feeding activities means their digestive system is working on properly so if the silkworm is fed properly you can easily understood your silkworm is healthy and the silkworm is not infected by this disease the general symptoms of disease is i was already told you the poor appetite uh, appetite and they show the less feeding activity means stop the feeding observed in infected silkworm sluggish movement and transparent head you know the head of silkworm is very dark white in colored but if such type of the infection is or such type of bacteria is infected by the your silkworm that time you are you are easily identified or easily observed the infected silkworm show transparent head the infected silkworm show slow body growth you know in healthy larva they are show very fast rate of body growth but if such type of the infection is present in their body they stop the feeding uh, they stop the feeding so finally your silkworm is not show proper growth then in elasticity of skin you know the electricity elasticity is the main from main features of your silkworm but infected larva do not show the elasticity so you can easily identify your silkworm is infected by bacterial disease sometime the oral and annual discharge means the infected larva start the vomiting and dysentery discharge observed in infected larva they start vomiting and dysentery after the serious infection of bacterial disease i hope you are understand these these three main important points of this disease now next point of this disease that is very important how to control this disease the weakness of silkworm is main source of infection your healthy larva is not generally infected by the bacteria but any type of weakness then any type of the body problem present in your silkworm that time they are easily infected by bacteria so to choose or to select healthy strong silkworm for the silkworm rearing it is a precaution against the bacterial disease next important control measure that is to maintain 
required temperature and humidity inside the rearing bed and rearing tray you know if humidity is very high and temperature is very low that time bacterial growth is easily happened in your rearing house so try to maintain required temperature and required humidity in rearing rearing house feeding of nutritious healthy mulberry leaves to silkworm this is a very important control measures or prevention against the your bacterial infection because you know weakness weakness is only happen if you are not continuous provide healthy nutritious mulberry leaves to your silkworm they are show weakness so it is your duty to provide nutritious mulberry leaves to the your silkworm during the rearing and last important measures control measures against a bacterial disease that is very important try to maintain hygienic condition in rearing bed as well as inside the whole rearing house because in a hygienic condition it is very favorable for the bacterial growth so it is your duty you can maintain hygienic condition in rearing bed i hope you are understand all the points of this disease now let us discuss the next disease this is the last disease of silkworm that is soto disease the infection the disease is mainly caused by bacteria named as bacillus thuringiensis these are the name of bacteria caused the soto disease you can kept in your mind this this bacterial bacteria name that is Bac bacillus thuringiensis symptoms the disease larva suddenly stop the feeding act activity that is loss of appetite then next important symptoms of after the infection of this disease that is slugness and lack of skin intention in infected larva then body of infected larva is show irregular growth then discharge then uh, loss of crapping power in pro legs means whatever the movement of legs is stop after the serious infection of this disease this is the symptoms generally observed in soto disease the in causing agent is bacillus thuringiensis the infected silkworm is suddenly collapse and if any type of serious infection are observed in your infected larva they will be die within a few days how to control the bacteria of this disease causing uh, disease is mainly found in dead disease dead infected larva so it is your duty to pick up the infected larva and symptomatic larva disease larva must be removed from rearing bed and rearing house then burn or destroyed outside the rearing house it is first duty of sericulturist to avoid this disease if any type of the symptoms is present in your silkworm related soto disease you can separate out or to burn in outside the rearing house the bacteria of this disease is mainly that is named as bacillus thuringiensis is mainly found in water so try to maintain hygienic condition in your rearing house this is the better method to control the soto disease in your rearing house because bacillus thuringiensis 
is mainly present and generally uh, if you use the such infect, uh, contaminated water that time this disease is easily spread in your rearing house so during the cleaning of mulberry leaves you are always tried to use clean water for the cleaning of mulberry leaves this is the most important control measures against the soto disease i hope you are understand what is the infection symptoms and control measures against these two bacterial disease if you have any question any difficulty regarding this two disease you can ask me in comment box thank you very much to all of you